Hello and welcome to Typing Agent. We're so glad that your school or district has chosen to embark your students on our state-of-the-art typing curriculum, where students will learn to type and love the fun they'll be having. Today, we're going to go over the very basics of what it means to be a teacher and all of the neat things you can do with the program. First things first, when you log into your Typing Agent account, the first thing you'll see is this page right here. This is called your dashboard. From your dashboard, as the name suggests, you can navigate virtually anywhere in the program with just a few simple clicks. If at any point you'd like to return to this page, go ahead and click the dashboard button over here or the logo up here to your left. To the right of that logo, you'll find your search bar. Now, upon clicking here, you'll be able to filter your search results for classes or students. If you know exactly who or what you're searching for, you can go ahead and type in the name. Otherwise, feel free to select one of the icons to restrict your search to the type of what you're looking for. All the way over here, you have a Demo Student button. This handy feature is designed to let you, the teacher, preview everything we have to offer from a student's eyes. As you can see, everything's already unlocked and open, and you can navigate to virtually any lesson in any curriculum and see exactly what a student does. Please note that this is definitely what we recommend if you'd like to test anything. This account does not impact any of your existing students' grades or progress. When you're done, hit Return to Admin to go back to where you were before. Underneath that Demo Student button, you can see an overview of how Typing Agent is being used by your school. The four windows up here will show you average minutes typed by students per week, average lessons completed by students per week, average percent of students in your account who are actively logging in and using the program, and then a testing report, which will show you the diagnostic testing average of each grade level. The graph will show you the usage month by month. All the way over here, you have your curriculum button. In Keyboarding Foundations 3 Plus for grades 3 through 12, students are given a placement test and based on how well they do for their grade level, they are placed on a learning path A through E. Click on the number of lessons below the curriculum. You'll use these buttons to view the different paths and which lessons are available to them. To the right of that, you'll find your roster button. This is where you will see all the students in all of your classrooms. When you select the checkbox next to any student, you can edit their specific information, edit their classroom enrollments, view the classrooms that they are currently enrolled in, log in as them, reset the password, or delete them entirely. Selecting multiple allows you to do all but a few. If your administrator has allowed you to add students, you'll see a handy Add Students button up here. This is where you can add them by CSV file or one by one. I'd like to briefly go over how to add your students with a CSV file, as there are a few little nuances to be aware of. When you select Import Students, you'll be taken to this instruction page of how to upload your students into the program. If you go to a class on the left-hand side, you can view the classroom's code. This will assign the student immediately to their classroom. While this assigns them first to one classroom, you'll be able to enroll them in multiple later on. But if you leave the class code blank, they'll be categorized as unassigned. It's not recommended you do this. Please also note that if you've got kindergartners, you'll need to enter in zero for the grade. If your school or district has enabled Google Single Sign-On, you'll need to create their students either one by one or by CSV file with their Google email as their username and their Google password as their password. Last but not least, please remember to save your CSV file as UTF-8. This will help format everything correctly for the most seamless upload. You also have the option to download a sample file with the correct formatting to which you can just fill in your data and then upload. Additionally, we can also add a student one by one. If you select Add a Student, you can fill out this web form to fill out their data. So, looking over at the right-hand side, we see this graph up here. The percentage bar is a legend of your license usage. The green portion represents how many assigned students are occupying licenses in your account. The blue portion represents free space. 
The yellow portion represents students who are unassigned, which means students who don't belong to any classroom and are just taking up licenses. Below that, we find this filter button. The filter button is where you can choose to view all students or unassigned students. Now that we've gone over the basics of your roster, let's move on. To the right of your roster button, you'll find your name. You might notice the arrow indicating that there's a drop-down list of options you can access. Under My Profile, you can change your username, title, password, and the language your interface appears in. Under Switch School, you can switch which school's classrooms you're viewing in the event that you teach at multiple buildings. Again, you have another option in the drop-down to view the demo student account. This is to really drive home the fact that if you'd like to test, please use this account. It's so important we just had to include it twice. Underneath that, you've got easy access to our Solution Center from anywhere in the program. I have also included the link in the description down below. Underneath that, you'll find the Logout button, which will, as it suggests, log you out of the program. Let's go ahead now and explore our classes. This is where you'll be making decisions to curate your student's experience. When you select a classroom, the first thing you'll see is the name of your classroom, the initials of all teachers who are instructing it, and the class code, which you can enable or disable for student self-registration if permitted by your administrator. If so, you've also got the handy option here to add students directly into your classroom, which will allow you to add them not only one by one or by CSV, but by block upload or by class code. If you're not rostering with any outside service, you'll see a pencil icon once you hover over the classroom name, should you want to change it. Then, up here and to the right, you've got an Agent Gadgets menu. There's a lot to see here, so I'll summarize. Add Teachers will allow you to add additional teachers to the classroom. Export Students will allow you to download your roster in CSV format. The editable parent letters in English and Spanish will allow you to print a letter to parents introducing them to Typing Agent. These PDF documents are on offline activities geared towards younger students to help familiarize them with the keyboard. These completion certificates are given to award your students for finishing milestones in their curriculums. Create Announcement will allow you to send a message to all of your students that will appear for them upon first logging in. Lastly, Delete Classroom will delete your classroom and unassign your students. If you do this, the students will not be deleted from Typing Agent, but will be unassigned. Under your Students tab, this is where you'll see your roster of students as well as add them individually. Just like in your roster, when you check the checkboxes next to any student, you can adjust their accommodations, view their curriculums, edit their specific information, reset their password, view and edit enrollments, unassign them, log in as them, print their login information in card format, or delete them entirely. You can also print off some of those achievement certificates, and this can be handy if only certain students have earned them. Selecting multiple allows you to do all but a few. Settings is where you'll go to curate the classroom experience. Please note that you can adjust these per individual students under accommodations but if you'd like to do them for the whole class, this is where you'll go. Under Class Details, you can reset and show passwords and adjust the days that class is in session. Under Curriculum, you can assign and remove curriculum that your students will get by default. Under Target Settings, you can set the expectations for one, two, or three stars. Stars are determined by both words per minute and accuracy and allow students to advance, with one star being the lowest passable standard, two stars being the median, and three stars being the highest. You can also determine how many stars a student will need in order to move on. We really like to stress that students should earn at least two stars, no max retries. This is the most pedagogically sound option that will allow your students to really learn what's going on in the lessons. There's also a reference for the target settings by grade level as set by your school or district. Under Lesson Settings, you'll be able to adjust lesson-specific nuances for your classroom as a whole, 
like mouse lessons in the K2 curriculum, or whether or not a student will be allowed to backspace and correct a mistake. Under Games, you can control the conditions required for your students to play in our arcade. You can have them earn grit coins, in which they can use to buy game time, have them earn experience points to unlock the arcade, and you can also adjust which games students will see. Over here, you can enable or disable games altogether as a whole. It's also important to note that if your students are working on a tablet, games will not be available to them. Accessibility options will allow you to adjust visual and audio accommodations for your classroom. This will include things like contrast, font size, single or double-handed typing, as well as text-to-speech. Digital citizenship is a curriculum we offer to grades 3 and up in order to teach what it means to act ethically and responsibly online. Because of the nature of this curriculum, we allow the option to lock and unlock certain lessons for students. You can do this one by one by clicking the individual tabs or all at once by selecting the checkbox. Back to our main list of tabs, the gradebook is your virtual report card where you'll see the time spent, average speed, words per minute, and grades of all students in the classroom. Under reports, you'll be able to generate class specific reports which will yield for the entire class. Select any of these tabs to find the exact information you're looking for, and if nothing seems to fit, check out Custom Report to make your own. Underneath this, you'll see two graphs that will show weekly learning activity, as well as average words per minute. Some reports I'd really like to bring attention to are the Progress Report, the Student Weekly Learning Activity Report, and the Time Report. The Progress Report is your first stop to view either an order in a detailed or summary format. This report will tell you if they're struggling in any curriculum, how many stars they're earning, and if they're just breezing through. You have a legend up here that will indicate how exactly your students are doing. You can also do a detailed report for more information. The Student Weekly Learning Activity Report is different than the Time Report in that the total time spent typing reflected in the time report does not include diagnostic test time. The student weekly learning activity report, which both yourself and the student can view to gauge their progress in the program, does include the total time of the diagnostic test as well as the total time spent. The class scheduled test tab indicates a handy feature that will allow you to assign a custom test to the classroom. With a scheduled test, you can create your own content, set a time limit, and create a due date, as well as adjust the day or days that it will be available to your students. Here is where you will create tests and view the progress of the students who have not yet taken it, and you can generate a report back here to view the results of those who have. Under Activity Log, you can view progress in real time of changes made to the student's account by staff members under Class Activity, or you can select student activity to see what every student is working on all at once. Under Notepad, you will see all the submissions from students in their Notepad curriculum should you choose to enable it. Last but most certainly not least, you'll find our Solution Center right next to the curriculums on the tab by the Notepad. This is where you'll go should you have any more questions or to find more specific information on anything we've covered today. Our Solution Center is always growing to better suit your needs and answer any questions you may have. You can always check out the rest of our YouTube channel for plenty of helpful videos to guide you along. If you find that you're still confused, you can always reach out to support via the chat or by emailing us at support at typingagent.com. We hope you have a great time with your students as they learn to type and love the fun.